Hi, welcome back to Manohar Academy. In this lesson, we are going to wrap up our module 3 on the class design. So we are going to do a quick recap. We have learned many concepts in this, in this module. So we have learned about the class design, object creation. We have learned, learned about encapsulation, the dry principle, about constructors and creating and objects. And we have also learned about the difference between the difference variables, objects, how the garbage collection works and what are the different characteristics of the object. We learned about static variables, static methods. Then we talked about method signatures, method overloading, static polymorphism, accessors and mutators. Then we talked about initialization blocks. Lastly, we discussed about packages and the package scope. So we are going to do a quick recap of all these topics. So let's get started. The class design. We have designed some classes and we have looked at the local date class in somewhat more detail. So the class is the blueprint. So we design the class so that we can create the objects that have those fields, those or the states and those behaviors. So the class is always the blueprint and we create the class by cl doing the design. And these objects are nothing but the instances of the class. So the class and object, they, clo they go very closely. And every time we create a class, we are creating a new reference type because in Java, we have only two types, either primitive or reference. So every class is a new reference type. So if you are creating a student class, student is the new reference type. And we know about the packages and we, we know how to include the packages in the class. And the class name along with package name makes the fully qualified name of the class. So here we have the class. So inside the class, we know we can have the member fields and these member fields can have the scope of public, private and package. To make something public, we use the keyword public. To make something private, we use the keyword private. If we don't mention public or private, then it is going to be of package scope. Also, these member fields, they can be static or non-static. If it is a static, it is a shared one. If it is non-static, it is at the object level. It is not shared across the objects. And to make something static, we use the keyword static. And if we don't use the keyword static, then it is going to be non-static. Not only the fields, the methods also can have the three scopes, that is public, private, and package. And they also can be of type static or non-static. And coming to the class, the class can be either public or non-public or another way of saying it can be public or package scope it can't be private scoped and every public class it should be in its own package and non-public classes they can be in any package so that is all about member fields and member methods and we have also seen a special method called two string method even though you don't define it it is still there and after that we have changed it to get the required behavior and other way of saying we have overridden that method we're going to see about this two string method in the next module in very detail so don't worry about that method also we have constructors which can be public private package which will help us to create the objects with some initial state also we have looked at the instantiation initialization blocks instance initialization block and static initialization block and uh, static initialization block, it will be executed only once, that is to when the class is loaded by the class loader. But the instance initialization block will be executed every time a object is created. So it obviously helps us to get the inst uh, initial state of the object, but this is very rare. We don't use instance initialization block, but we will be using static initialization block to give some initial values to the static fields. Okay. Let's talk a bit more about these members. But before saying anything about these members, let's first confirm that the constructors and the initialization blocks, they are not members of the class. Okay, they are not the members of the class. They will be available in the class for providing some initial values to the objects, but they are not part of the, they are not members. And these private methods and private fields, which are class members, they provide the encapsulation and security by hiding the implementation details because these are not available outside the class. They are hidden inside the class. So they provide the encapsulation and security. And coming to public methods and public fields, the public fields, they are quite rare. Generally, we shouldn't, if you are making something public, you have to think twice, 
think thrice, thrice not twice. Okay, uh, they're quite rare. Okay, and public methods, they provide the interface. Actually, they are very important. So whatever methods you are making public, make sure they have the proper name because they are the interface to interact with the class and the object. Without these methods, you can't access the <laughs> class or the object. So these are the very important ones. Pay close attention to these methods and make sure you are exposing the methods that are that should be exposed, not all the methods. Okay, coming to package scoped fields and methods, they are similar to the private fields and methods, but the only thing is they are available outside the class, but only inside the same package. So they can be trusted with other classes in the same package, but they can't be trusted outside the package. So for the same reason, they are sometimes called package private scoped. Okay. And also remember is if you have some package, say com.manoharacademy.com.module2, someone can include their class inside that package. So, and, so even though we say some fields are available only inside the package, uh, make sure you pay close attention because someone else can add their class to your package. Okay, coming to static fields and methods. They belong at the class level. They don't belong with each individual object. All individual objects will share the same set of fields and methods that are that are available at the class level. And we don't need a object to invoke these methods and access to access these fields. You can call these methods and uh, access these fields on the class itself. We generally don't see static fields that much, but we will be coming across these public static final constant fields. So they are static, but they are public and they are final or they are constants. These, these are somewhat um, useful, but even then they are quite rare. As I said, they can be all, always directly invoked on the class. We don't need to create the objects to access them. So because of that reason, public methods, they can be used to create factory methods also to create the math libraries. For example, math class. Okay, and inside a static method, you can access only other static methods and fields. This is a this is a very required uh, limitation because that is how the static fields and methods works. They are at the class level, so you at the class level you can access only other static methods and static fields. Okay, that is about class members. Now let's talk about the method signature and method overloading, which we have already learned. Okay, so method signature is defined by the method name and the arguments and the access modifiers, return types, method variable names, they are not part of the method signature. Only two things are part of method signature. That is the method name and method arguments. And coming to method overloading, when we talk about method overloading, we have to understand method signature before that. But because we know the method signature, when we say we are overloading method, that means we are creating multiple methods that have the same name but they have different method signatures. So that is what we mean by overloading a method. Okay, this will result in the static polymorphism. So whenever we are calling a method, so we have multiple methods with the same name. So it, the method that matches the method signature will be invoked. For example, we are calling a method with integer and integer. So whatever method has that signature of method name integer integer will be invoked. If there is no exact match on the signature, then the implicit type costing will happen to find a match. For example, I am pro I am calling a method with int comma int, but there is no method with int taking two int arguments, but there is a method that is taking two long arguments. So implicit type costing will change the int to long and that method will match and that method will be invoked. After type costing, if there is no method found, then we are going to get a compilation error. So at the compilation time itself, we know which method will be invoked, either which matches the signature before the type costing or after the implicit type costing. But we know at the compilation time itself, which method will be invoked. That is the reason it is called static polymorphism. Okay, that is about method signatures and method overloadings. Now let's talk about object reference and object. Object reference is not same as the object. It is very important to understand this point. Object reference is not same as object. So if, when we are creating some object reference, we are only creating object reference. We are not creating object. And this reference variable, it can point or it can refer to an object 
on the heap on the <coughs> not stack on the heap memory so this uh, reference variable it can point to some object on the heap memory and that object itself should be of type local date because the reference variable is of type local date it can point to that object of type local date or it can also point to null reference okay so this is not saving the object okay it is only saving the address of the object or it is referring to the object so this is still a variable and it is not object and we create objects by either calling the constructor using the new keyword or by invoking some factory method so that is how we create object and most of the time objects and object references they work together so object reference is the only entry point i mean only the only mechanism using which we can we can point or we can refer to an object so both are important but the distinction is also important and we know that object has three characteristics that is state which is defined by the values that are saved in the fields and behavior that is nothing but the methods that you can call on this object so member methods will define its behavior and identity comes from the object creation so whenever it is created it is going to get an identity so whenever it is created it is going to get created at some address so the address actually provides some identity identity to the object and we can always compare objects either by state or identity when we are comparing by identity we are talking about whether we are referring to the exact same object or not when we are talking about comparing by state we are talking about two different objects whether the values saved in the fields whether they are same or not so that is about comparing objects and com coming to the object behavior and the object state can affect its behavior for example if order is already shipped you can't cancel that but you can return the you can return the item once you have received okay so that way object state can affect its behavior okay this is the last slide in this lesson so this is the last point we are going to do a quick recap we know how to create objects right i mean we can either call the constructor or we can call the factory method to create the object so let's talk about the constructor obviously we know that this uh, obviously we know about the factory method that is nothing but a static method on the class so it will take care of creating the object for us but let's talk about constructor constructors they are always invoked using the new keyword so you, you can't, there is no other way to invoke that constructor if there is no user defined constructor then the compiler provides the default constructor which doesn't take any arguments which doesn't do anything so but the point is the class will always have one or other constructor either the default constructor provided by the compiler or the user defined constructor but the moment user defines a constructor the compiler is not going to involve in the constructor creation at all and also in the constructor we can call other constructors but the call to the other constructor should be the first statement inside the constructor and also when we are referring to the other constructors we use the keyword this okay that is about constructors so once we create the object it is going to be there on the heap memory as long as we need that object we are going to have a reference to that object but after that after some time like whenever you are done with that object someone has to destroy or someone has to uh, reclaim that memory that is assigned to the object so it is taken care by the garbage collector or garbage collection process what garbage collector do is it periodically checks the heap memory for unreachable objects when we say unreachable object that is nothing but a object without any reference variable reference variable pointing towards that okay so all these unreachable objects will be destroyed by garbage collector and the memory will be released for new objects so if the garbage collector is never run so all the memory will be taken by existing objects after some time so garbage collection is very important and but it runs in the background you can't do anything about that it periodically checks and uh, it is going to claim those objects which are no longer can be referenced and it is going to release the memory back but as a developer or as a programmer the responsibility is that once you are done with a object assign null to the reference variable most of the time you don't need to do that because that reference variable is going to be going out of scope or something like that but if the reference variable is going to be there for very long uh, then make sure you assign a null reference to that reference variable so that the object 
can be garbage collected. Okay, that is all about this module. In the next module, we are going to have many lessons and all the lessons will be about inheritance. So inheritance is a very important topic. It will, <coughs> it will help us to maintain the code. Also, it will help us to write an effective and reusable code. Last but not least, if you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And if you are benefited by this video, please make sure you like this video and share it with your friends so that they can also watch, they can also learn. See you in the next module. Thank you.